Hey, if you're new to the lathe, I just want to go over a quick anatomy of the lathe. So if you're shopping, you know what the specifications is talking about when you are looking at things online. The overall weight of the lathe is an important specification. So a heavier lathe in general will be more stable when your bowls or things are out of balance and will reduce vibration. Okay, the first part of the lathe is the headstock. The headstock is the power of the lathe, right? That's where the motor is. The more horsepower, generally the better. Some of them are not variable speed, and so they will have a series of pulleys that you would change belts in to get your different speeds. And if you're not turning real frequently, that's, that's okay. I would get if you could, I'd get the variable speed. I know they cost more, but it just is such a better experience if you have the variable speed drive. All of the variable speed drives also have a couple ranges, at least most of the ones I've seen. And so inside here is two pulleys. And so I have it right now on the high range, but if you want more horsepower, you can move it over to the other range. So it's the same variable speed drive, but we're getting the speed difference with just a couple pulleys. And this one goes from, on the low range, from 50 to 1200 RPM, and on the high range, 125 to 3200 RPM. Of course, when you're on the higher range, you lose a little bit of torque. What voltage does this operate at? So I'm in America, and so we have 220 volt um, power legs. And so this is a 240 volt motor. And so I need to have 240 volts available where I'm gonna plug this unit in. So that, that can be a deal breaker for a lot of people. If that is gonna be very difficult for you and you don't wanna go through the effort of the 240 volt, then look for 120 volt model and I think the one I used to have was like I said was like a force one and a half horsepower or so and it ran off 120 volts and I think most people can get by with that most of them have them these days but this has a reversing switch down here so that you can change whether you're going in reverse or forward with the lathe that's a nice feature uh, some people do reverse turning it's really nice for sanding because I've got the dust hood here and you can get a dust hood behind you and so when you are reverse sanding it throws the dust more towards the dust or collector and away from you whereas if it's going forward it's throwing that dust right in your face so the reversing feature is really nice what my lathe doesn't have that i wish it had this on off switch is right here and whenever i have if i'm over here turning right if i'm turning right here and something happens, something catches or, you know, something and, the, and the, something out of balance is spinning, I can easily step out of the way and push this, okay? But if I'm over here turning on a bowl and I've got this giant bowl that's spinning around and I'm over here turning and let's say I get a catch and, part, and something goes out of balance and this bowl's turning at, you know, 1,000 or 1,200 RPM, I cannot shut this thing off without coming through here and shutting it off. And so that's happened to me a few times. That's very scary. So robust and then Powermatic, my father-in-law has the newer version of this same Powermatic leg and it has a magnetic on off switch that you can move around to wherever you want it. And so if I'm turning a bowl, I would move it over here. And then if something bad happened, I could stand away from all the action and turn it off, okay? So that, is a nice feature to look for if your lathe, if the lathe you're looking at has that. Um, I highly recommend it. I think I can add that to this one. I just haven't went through the effort. But this is the spindle thread right here, and all of the lathes. This is important because this is what your uh, chucks and your face plates attach to. So you would screw the face plate onto your bowl blank or your platter or whatever you're turning. And then you put the face plate on the spindle threads here, okay? And that, that then you can turn your, your piece of wood, okay? So the threads uh, are important. So you need to know what your spindle, your headstock spindle thread is, because that's what I need. And like for this one, it's one and a quarter inches. And then they'll have, mine has an eight TPI. That is turns per inch, okay? 
So eight TPI. They're all a little different. Some are an inch, some are an inch and a quarter. There might even be some bigger lays that's inch and a half. So that's something you need to know because you'll need your attachments to fit those threads. The faceplate here, if, if I got a different lay, this faceplate wouldn't work if the threads don't match. Now with the chucks, which I have a video on the two chucks I have, uh, if you want to watch that, this is a Vicmark uh, VM120. And if you look at the chucks, they have an insert that's that you can take out of your chuck. Okay, the Vicmark has it, and also the strong, uh, the one one way stronghold chuck has it. There's an insert here. So what's nice about that is you buy your chucks, and then if you ever upgrade your lathes, or or you get a different lathe, or you want to sell your chucks, all a person would need to do if this doesn't fit on the spindle is they would just need to buy that insert that fits the lathe that, that they have, the lathe that you have. You just have to buy that. And then you can also put in a drive spur uh, that there's little teeth on it and those dig in. So as the lathe spins, the teeth will dig in. And then out here is the live center. And the live center has ball bearings that will allow the wood to freely spin. And this is uh, the tail stock. The tail stock, you can move this lever and you can slide the tail stock back and forth. There's the headstock spindle threads and the hole here takes, for my lay, takes a Morse M-O-R-S-E taper 2, MT2. And that's how the drive spur goes in. This freely spins and then that taper will go into the tail stock so there's your there's a jacobs chuck you could put a drill in that goes in with the morse 2 taper also so you can see the teeth there of the drive spur driving the wood and then you can see the live center allowing the wood to spin this is the banjo right here is called the banjo so when they uh, say above the banjo, or you have anything that says banjo, that's what this thing is called, okay? And so it simply slides all angles, and then you can lock it down. And then here's the tool rest, and this is an important measurement. Mine is one inch, so different uh, banjos have different threads, so it might be three-quarter inch, it might be a half, it might be an inch and a quarter, I don't know, but this one is an inch, okay? So if I ever buy tool rest, I need to get one inch tool rest, okay? The other important measurement is what they call the swing above the bed. Swing above the bed. And it's actually, they give it in the diameter of what you can turn. So the lathe on this one, if I measure up here, I get about 10 and a half inches. But they actually in the specs will list this as instead of 10 inches being from here to the bed, they list the swing as 20 inches. Meaning I can turn a 20 inch diameter bowl or platter without hitting the bed, okay? Then they also give the measurement above the banjo. So the swing above the banjo, that would be the measurement from the center of the, of the spindle down to the banjo. Because if you're turning a bowl right here, you've also sometimes have to try to, get, you have to get this tool rest under it. Um, at least it makes it easier if you can. So the, the measurement, the swing above the banjo, and for this one's about 15, and three quarter inches. So that means I can turn a 15 and three quarter inch bowl above the banjo, which is a pretty good size bowl. And if I move the tool rest out of the way, I can do 20 inch diameter bowl. Okay, so look at that. That's an important, that, that'll tell you how big of a bowl or platter you can turn. Another important measurement is the on centers or distance between centers. Uh, normally is how it's written. And that's the difference distance between your headstock here and your tail stock. And so that will give you the maximum length of something that you can turn on centers. Okay. And you'll lose a little bit from that maximum with this drive spur and then your live center in. So just keep that in mind. You may lose a few inches. So this is the bed. And it, and it have certain lengths, and if you can see down here, I have a bed extension. This bed extension can be mounted on lathes up high to extend this. 
so that I could take this tailstock and slide it further back. If the maximum length you're ever going to be turning is a foot or less, then you're going to get, you can get by with a smaller lathe, especially if you're not looking at turning bowls and things. But if you want to turn baseball bats or, or table legs, things like that, that's going to be an important measurement for you. You got to make sure you got the length that you need. And uh, bigger is better if you can afford it, but you got to factor in your shop, you know, what your shop can handle and what voltage is available at your shop. So I hope you can take some of these things, apply the ones that, that are helpful to you.